Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are working on the assigned homework problems for Chapter 6, the short exercises. And we'll see how many we can get through in this video. Um, so 6-5 is where we left off. And it says here, explain in your own words why separation of duties is often described as the cornerstone of internal control for safeguarding assets. Describe what can happen if the same person has custody of an asset and also accounts for the asset. Um, I kind of like touched upon this in the last exercise um, for number five here, not allowing an accounts payable clerk to sign uh, to sign checks. You know that's a separation of duties. Um, you know having a separation of duties safeguard you know to a certain extent. It adds an additional layer of internal control um, for theft. If you have an account, if you just have one person, accounts payable, and they write the checks, all right, um, and they also sign the check, all right, and they can write checks all day long and sign them and cash them and you know take the money. But if the accounts payable clerk um, writes the check and then someone else you know, let's say the controller has to sign the check or the owner of the business has to sign the check, okay? Um, then, you know, I mean, think about it. If the owner has to sign the check and that account's payable clerk writes a check for $100, right? And the owner and is going to say, well, what is this for? And has to have you know, that accounts payable clerk has to have the proper documentation, like an invoice or whatever have you, with a reputable uh, supplier in order for the owner to sign off on that check. And even if, if the check is made out to cash for $100, you know, that owner is going to say, well, what's this? Okay, uh, you know, why am I writing a check for $100? Or if it's to a vendor you never even heard of before, okay, well, you know, well, who's this vendor? Okay, um, you know, what did we buy from them? Where's the invoice? So it's much, much more difficult for that one person in order to be able to steal and bezel, you know, from the company. Um, you know, you, by adding an additional person, you know, it creates an additional level of security with your internal control. And, you know, I've seen where um, we've had a, where the situation was that there's an accounts payable clerk and, um, when it comes time, and this is just an example of separation of duties, um, you know, the accounts play, payable clerk runs an accounts payable trial balance. Okay, uh, you know that that means that's going to be a listing of all the vendors that they owe money to, and they give it to the controller, and the controller chooses based upon the, the cash situation who they're going to pay. Okay, um, now then the uh, once they're you know, these vendors are chosen, right? The accounts payable clerk will then write the checks and give it back to the controller. And the controller, you know, looks looks them over and okays them, but the controller doesn't sign the check. They sign the checks. The, uh, the checks are then given to the owner of the business, okay? And the owner of the business then looks over those checks and signs them, okay? Um, so now there's a third level of separation of duty here, which allows uh, m much, much, you know, less chance for um, not only, you know, one person stealing, but even collusion um, between two people. So if you have one person controlling everything, it's very easy for them to do whatever they, they feel like. But if you have a second person, now the two people have to be in collusion in order to be able to steal something. And that's much, you know, obviously the more people involved, the harder it is to do. And then if you have the owner of the company um, overseeing everything, now it becomes even more difficult because they're able to, um, you know, they're able to spot you know, the ability of collusion. I mean, collusion does happen in the business. You know, separation of duties doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, theft can't go on. But the more layers, layers that you put in, um, the more unlikely it is to occur. Okay. 
Right, uh, six six. Look at each of the following employees of Anthony's restaurant. Which of the elements of the fraud triangle apply? Perceived pressure, perceived opportunity, and rationalization. Okay, as the bartender put puts twenty dollars in tips in her pocket, she thinks nobody will get hurt. Okay, well that's just a rationalization. That's just an excuse. Nobody will get hurt. That's the excuse. Jim uses money stolen from the company to pay for his mother's high medical bills. Okay. Well, because of the high medical bills, there's pressure for him to, to need the money. So that's perceived pressure. Kirk knows he'll be fired if he doesn't record some fictitious sales. Okay. Um, he's being pressured because he knows he'll be fired. All right. So that's why he records some fictitious sales. So perceived pressure. Trish, the night sales manager, knows that upper management doesn't monitor internal control. Okay, because they don't monitor internal control. Okay, that allows for the opportunity. All right, Trish doesn't have any pressure, um, uh, like uh, because she doesn't need money. Okay, and she's not rationalizing. She's not making an excuse. But the the lack of uh, the internal, the lack of monitoring of internal control creates an opportunity for uh, something to happen. Alan, a waiter, drove to work in a BMW and bragged about his recent vacation to Hawaii. Okay. Well, um, you know, he's only a waiter. Okay. Now, it's not to say that waiters don't make a lot of money. It depends upon, you know, where they're at, but the vast majority of waiters can't afford a BMW and aren't taking vacations in Hawaii. Okay. So, um, you know, he's going to need money, you know, to support the, those things. So that would be, you know, that would be creating pressure on his part in order to, uh, uh, you know, cr commit fraud. Brian, a cashier for the past five years, was caught stealing cash. When questioned about the theft, he said that he had not received a promotion, had not received a promotion and deserved more pay. Okay. Well, that's just an excuse. That's how he's rationalizing why he uh, uh, stole the cash. Six, seven. Identify each of the following as internal control objective, an internal control activity, or a limitation of internal control. Okay, separation of duties is an internal control activity. It's not an objective, it's an activity, and there's um, limitations. So when you're looking at these, think about the objective, meaning the goal, activity being what uh, is what is being done, or a limitation of that internal control. Right? So that's how you're thinking about these three answers. So separation of duty is an activity. Uh, collusion all right, is a limitation. It's harder to uh, collude. You know, it's hard to collude. Um, so that's a limitation of in internal controls. Having the internal controls, um, you know, it makes it more difficult for more than one person to actually uh, steal or commit fraud. Right? Proper authorization is an activity. You know, it's something you do um, as part of your internal control. Report financial information properly. All right? um, that's an objective. Um, why are we uh, creating internal controls so that everything is, you know, on the up and up and that we report it as such? Okay, uh, mandatory vacations. Okay, um, that's an activity. It's something that has to be done. Okay, um, you know, that's kind of like a week one. I mean, um, you know, if uh, you know, if you uh, let me let me try to think about this here for a second. If you know uh, employees don't get vacations, they can get burned out, and if they get burned out, you know um, they start to have a bad attitude, and having a bad attitude creates pressure. The pressure creates you know the need for uh, wanting to embezzle or commit fraud or steal. So um, you know taking the activity of uh, ha making sure that they actually take vacations lessens the pressure lessens the likelihood of, of the, the theft. K6, management override. Okay, that's a limitation of uh, internal control. Right? 
um, you know, if you think back to the previous, you know, uh, exercise where I showed the accounts payable clerk, the uh, controller and the owner, um, that, it, you know, management override is that sort of an example, okay? Um, because, you know, if it's just the accounts payable clerk and the controller, remember they don't, you know, it's not their business, okay? Um, so the management overriding is a limitation. Now the owner, you know, he can put a stop to all of that. So that's why that's a limitation. Uh, complies with laws and regulations. So that's an objective, all right? Um, why you want to use internal controls because you want to stay in line with laws and regulations. Adequate documents and records. Um, that's an activity. Obviously, uh, by documenting everything and, and having records, uh, you know, leaves a paper trail. Um, so that's an activity of internal control. Um, poorly designed controls are a limitation, right? You know, if they're strongly designed, they're not uh, a limitation uh, to the internal control. And operates efficiently and effectively. Um, that is an objective of internal control. We want them to uh, operate efficiency, uh, efficiently and um, effectively. All right, let's do number eight here. Peters Hardware maintains the following policies, procedures with regard to internal control. Indicate by letter which of the following control activities applies to each of the following procedures. So we have proper authorization, adequate documents and records, restricted access, security measures, and separation of duties. So, number one, every day all records written are recorded in the accounting records using the information on the check stubs. So, um, you know, all checks are written and recorded in the accounting records, so that's adequate documents and records. The store utilizes electronic theft detection. Well, um, that's a security measure, right? Utilizing theft detection systems. Purchases of new equipment must be approved by the store manager. Okay, so that's proper authorization because it has to be approved. Daily sales are recorded in the accounting records by someone other than the sales associate. So that's a separation of duty because there's more than one person involved. And the company maintains passwords that limits access to the computerized accounting records. Obviously restricted access. Okay, so with that I'm going to uh, stop here and pick up with number nine in the next video.